Good morning, everyone. How are you this beautiful day that the Lord has made? Well, right now I'm having an ice storm, but I'm nice and cozy in the house, and I'm thankful that I have electricity on. Well, I'm Karen Jane Casey on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. This is where we talk about our struggles in life and we find encouragement. We learn from our experiences and we turn to the Lord about everything. Um, I intend for this to only be 10 to 15 minutes because I know people are very busy these days. But please know that during this episode, I'm not going to be judging or lecturing down at you. I'm not going to be yelling and preaching at you. I'm sharing my journey and I'm still on it. And I encourage you to share what you learn. We learn together. During the month of March, we continue what we started at the beginning of the year, to focus on the Lord through our life in Jesus Christ instead of on the distractions of this world. And, as we covered in February, it's important to walk in love, always remembering the greatest commandment. And what is that? Essentially, it is, first, we love our Creator, the one who has unfailing love for us. And secondly, we love our neighbors, those in need, as we love ourselves in a healthy, balanced way. And then Jesus commands us to love even our enemies, to pray for them for their blessings. Well, during the month of March, we will look at some issues, problems that may serve to trip us up along our journey. This week's topic is right on with the real issues that we face during this pandemic virus, social distancing, and economic decline, unrest on every side. Facing the unknown. Facing the unknown, what does that make you think of? One day we see our loved ones, our friends, and the next day it's impossible to get to see them. One day we think that we're secure on our great job and future, and the next day all of that is gone. Many of us have experienced illnesses that could have taken our lives. Or we have lost a loved one to the worldwide virus, an unexpected accident or other calamity that suddenly happens to rock our world. It's heartbreaking and it shakes us to the core. Some of us have experienced with today's pandemic and rules, a loved one is taken to the hospital and then we don't know what is going to happen next. We don't get to see them. We are separated from them at a time where they need us and we need them. And that amount of time, we don't know. We don't know how they're doing. We don't know if we will ever get to see them again. And if they die, we're likely not going to be able to have a funeral. How is there any closing then? These possibilities are real and very frightening. Besides the pandemic virus, children, teenagers, and adults sometimes do disappear. Maybe a teenager has run away. Maybe there has been human trafficking happening. The point is, we who are left behind don't know what's going to happen next or when we might see our loved ones again. The separation can be ongoing for years. In all of this, We feel hopeless to the circumstances. We have no control over it, but we do not have to go without hope. There is one who can, we can turn to with anything, regardless of how big or small our problems, our troubles might be. Each and every moment we can turn to him. He, our creator, knows every hair on our head. And if we think about it, he has already rescued each of us more than once, out of calamities. He created each of us with a specific purpose. He wants to help us if we only ask. We have free will. He will patiently wait for us to turn to Him. As we face the unknowns in life, we can turn to God, lean on Him for our safety and our shelter. He is our ultimate provider. We can rely on His unconditional love, His goodness, and His justice. You may think that I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do. I have lost loved ones suddenly, and I cried out to the Lord to bring them, to bring me through that loss. I have cried out to the Lord to rescue me from life-threatening situations, and He did 
Give me a way of escape each and every time when we cry out to the Lord with a sincere and contrite heart. He knows our thoughts and our feelings, and he is there for us. But also, I want to share a story that happened while I was a teenager over 50 years ago, because in it, you will see the choices that we have, the choices that we have in every situation. While I was living in a dysfunctional home and violent home in rural West Virginia, one day, my mother simply disappeared with my baby brother. They had disappeared late one Saturday night evening, and they were on foot. And then suddenly a terrible storm came up. So once aware, the entire community, the entire town helped us search for them. The next morning, they were both found at the bottom of Rock Cliff, not far from our home on the mountain. My mother was dead, and my baby brother was left severely handicapped. He was six weeks old. How did this happen? Who was responsible for it? That mystery was never solved. Was there a closure that we needed? Many people believed, like me, that my mother had committed suicide in that instance. She had, been a tr- had lived a troubled life for many years leading up to that. Hmm. Others believed that there was a murderer on the loose. And that murderer might come back for the rest of us. Should we live our lives in fear? And should we be upset and angry because of that murderer seemingly getting by with it? Where do you turn for answers when nothing makes sense? I'm telling you this story because that could have eaten me up the rest of my life. You have to make a decision in your, in your, you have to make a decision in the midst of your situation. Thankfully, I did turn to the Lord because otherwise this tragedy with a terrible mystery could have debunked my life, my whole life. I turned to the Lord and in that I found solace. If she had been murdered and those murderers were running free, I did not have to worry about the justice in that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. I knew that God is the ultimate justice. Even if I didn't even see it happen, I knew. Whether in this life or the next, any murderer will not escape punishment. That goes with the spiritual law of sowing and reaping. If we sow evil, we can expect to face consequences. Maybe not today, but justice will prevail. Therefore, I didn't need to be upset or worry about what may happen with any of the rest of us with murderers looming around. God, in his perfect way, will handle that situation. When we, in faith, cast our cares on the Lord, give our problems to him, he fights our battles. We can decide to have patience and trust in him. It's beyond our control, but it is not beyond God's control. What if my mother had committed suicide? Then I can lean on the Lord for his abundant mercy that do not fail, his amazing love to wash over her. In all of that, I did come to closure. When we submit to the Lord, show him our respect, reverential fear fear and awe of him, obey him and love him, and that is all that he, he deserves, all of that. And we can bring our prayers and our petitions to him. And then we know that his perfect will shall be done in his perfect way and his perfect timing. It may not look at all like what we expect, but, and we may not get answers. We may not receive the answers we want, but we can know and trust his will, his timing, his perfect way is happening because God is the one who is ultimately in control and he sees everything, the past, the present, and the future. How can we prepare for the future unknowns in our own lives? We can turn to God in faith one day at a time, one step at a time. I pray for my loved ones every day. I pray for my son daily and then he suddenly died this past May. While I grieved this terrible loss, I also knew in my heart it was my my son's time to go because I prayed for him and he died. 
Because I prayed for him and then he died, I knew that it was within God's perfect will and timing for him to go. Who knows what terrible things he might have had to face had he lived longer than he was supposed to. And because I knew how much my son loved the Lord, I had faith and I will see him again in heaven. We will spend eternity together. I encourage you also to turn to God in your prayer, in repentance, in obedience, and in praise for all that he has done for you and all that he does right now. Rely on the Lord for everything. Lean on him in any situation, and you can face the unknown, and you're not alone. So, there was a time in my life where I was desperately lost, hurting, and afraid. I suffered various abuses most of my life, child abuse, domestic violence, and then abuse by toxic people. I imagine that's true for, for a lot of you as well. I also grieved over the loss of a husband and last year the loss of my son. I, have, I had major back surgery. I leaned on God for each and every situation, but God, He works miracles in my life. He rescued and delivered me, and I didn't deserve it. So he can do that for you. What, when I came to Jesus, everything changed. I am never alone. He is always with me. I am healed. I have joy in my heart, replacing the brokenness. And I do not live in fear. I have an awesome future with the Lord. This is what I want for every person. So as I share, I share the good news of Jesus in every podcast. The most awesome thing that you could do for yourself is to decide to come to Jesus, to rededicate your life to Him. God's amazing love for us is demonstrated when He was willing to sacrifice His only Son for our sakes. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then Jesus himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. In John 1, chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, we learn how important it is that we confess. Confess our sins. Confess Jesus. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. I encourage you, Regardless of where you stand with the Lord today in your relationship with Jesus, I encourage you to please pray with me and say it out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know, I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son. And I believe that Jesus did suffer and die on the cross, even for me, to pay for my sins. And He defeated death. He arose from the grave. But Lord, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins. I walk away from them all now. Please help me to stand firm because I'm going to be tempted. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless. I am nothing without you. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you now, Jesus. I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said this prayer, you have begun your relationship with the Lord, or you've rededicated your life to the Lord. I encourage you to study and read the Word of God, pray, and learn about the character of Jesus and the promises that He has for you. Always pray and obey with gratitude as your faith grows. When you focus on Jesus and His love and rely upon Him through your issues, and when you face the unknown, with patient faith, wherever, whatever circumstance you may find yourself in, with Jesus you can find inner peace and joy, even in the midst of chaos and challenges. I want to thank you for joining me in this episode of Turn to God with Karen. I'm Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I've also added on Wednesdays, I have Sword of the Spirit where we actually read parts of the Bible. And then on the first and third Fridays, 
Karen's Book Corner, where I share with you and we discuss different things that I've written. I invite you to share your comments, your suggestions, all feedback is always welcome. And you can contact me through my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. And when you go to my website, you will see information about books, blogs, podcasts, and even some resource information materials relating to domestic violence. Well, thank you and God bless.